Today we are going over this SwitchBox 1080p pan tilt camera. It does have two-way audio. There's the uh, microphone and here's the uh, speaker in the back so that way you can talk to the person as well as the person talking back to you. If you tilt the camera up, there's a slot for micro SD card. This is a 32 gigabyte. The micro SD card is not included, so you have to buy your own. Once it's inserted, you can slide down to hide the micro SD card slot. Typical of SwitchBot is that they include everything. So, in addition to the camera, you get the uh, wall mount plug. This pen is just for size comparison, so you can see how big it is. It even comes with this, which is for resetting the camera back to default. I can't believe they even include the anchors to mount this to the wall. Here's the micro USB cable for powering up the camera. It is not USB-C. The cable is about six feet long. If you need anything longer, then I'll give you the link to a 15 feet core. This is the wall mount. So basically, you drill it into the wall with these two. And then to attach the camera, just slide in and then twist it to lock it in place. So let's power it up and see what happens. The camera is now plugged into the wall. There's the LED to indicate that it's on. It has power. While it's doing its thing, let's power up the phone to download the app. When you first open the app, you need to click on profile and then sign in. I'm not going to create an account. I'm just going to use my Google account. Once it recognizes my Google account, I'm in, and you can see that it already has the strip light that I did a review earlier on profile. Let's click on the plus button to add. It's going to ask what devices to add, so we're going to find something, something about the pan tilt camera. There it is, down the bottom. Click. Is the camera flashing red? Yes, it is, because it's just connected and it has power. So click on flashing red. This camera is only 2.4 gigahertz, so be sure that your router is 2.4. Enter your Wi-Fi credentials here. Click on Next. Once it displays the QR code on your phone, as seen here, go ahead and display the phone to the camera, so that way the camera sees the QR code. The camera does see the QR code. Click on I heard the prompt tone. Give the camera a name, and then click on Use Now. You are done. Let's go ahead and click on the camera and see what happens. It's pretty cool that you can control the camera by just sliding your finger on the touch screen. If you want to take a picture, go ahead and click on it. Every time you click on it, it saves to the, uh, the gallery. This icon is for full screen. If you want to listen, click on this icon. If you want to talk, you have to press and hold down the, the icon. If you want to record straight to your mobile phone, just click on the recording button. And then press it again to stop recording. You can see that it already saved into your phone. Switch from HD to SD if you have bad or good internet connection. If you slide the icon for more option, you'll see more option. When you click on playback, you get a schedule. Right now, there's no recording because we just got started. Currently, it records to the micro SD card that we inserted earlier. But if you want, you can always store it in the cloud. Here are the prices for cloud recording. It's about $8 per camera per month for 30 days. On the top upper right hand screen, you can tap on the three icons to see more options. Let's click on motion detection. 
Right now, it will only record when there's motion detection. If you want, you can just set up so that it only cares about human, and that's what we care about. In local storage, you can see that it recognizes my 32 gigabyte SD card, micro SD card. For recording mode, set it up to be event only. That way, you'll save a lot of space. If you click on basic settings, there's an option to turn off that annoy LED lights that will screen. Now, the camera doesn't show any lights at all. It's just blank. That's good, because I don't want people to think that the camera is recording. When human is detected, you'll get a notification on your screen. And you can always view all of your paths by going into the app and then going down to messages. Messages, so that way you can see what just happened. As of this moment, there's no settings that I can see in the app for RTSP, but we'll go back to the main machine, the main desktop, to see if such option exists. If anything changes, I'll let you know. Hopefully, you've enjoyed this review of mine for the SwitchBot. I think this is a fantastic deal for such a little camera that can do a lot. As always, I really appreciate you guys subscribing to my channel, and thanks for watching.